Hello, welcome back to the woods, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to another Simple Stick project. Now this is gonna be another one of those projects that you can do out in the woods, if you're able, if not, it's another one that you can do at home in readiness for when we do finally get back out in the woods. So the project that we are going to do in this video is a Roycroft pack frame. The idea originally conceived by a guy called Tom Roycroft, who was a Canadian survival instructor who was famously uh, Morse Kahansky's mentor. He got the idea or the concept from somebody who had served in Korea. He'd seen local people using a, a, a bigger version, a longer version for, for moving stuff around. He took that idea, refined it, and came up with this very simple backwards classic. It's been done by a lot of people. This is nothing new. You'll see lots of these out on, on the internet. But what I've noticed with quite a few is people have taken the idea and tried to make it their own and they've overcomplicated it. What I'm gonna do in this video is show you how to make it, and we're gonna do it simple. We'll keep the not simple, the ones that Tom and Moores and co still used and keep it super super simple because all the best things are always simple. It's very very simple all it requires is three sticks and I'll give you the dimensions for those in a moment as far as gear goes well all you're going to need is a knife some cordage and possibly a pruning saw or you could use your h-frame buck saw that we did in the last video now for the rest of the video we're going to go back to the shed i'm just out for my little walk and to have a quick cup of tea and get some fresh air so now back to the shed and here we are back at the shed now as i just said for this project, you're going to need three sticks. You're going to need one that is from your elbow to your fingertip in length and no more than two fingers thick, but ideally no less than a thumb thick. You're also going to need two sticks that are from your armpit to your fingertip long and about a thumb's width. So what you should have is something that looks like this and there are my three sticks ready to go as before with the other projects it doesn't really matter what type of sticks you are using it could be hazel could be a bit of sycamore could be spruce it can be whatever again i'm using dogwood because it's what i had to hand so my first job i'm going to work on this the shorter stick and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create two flat surfaces on either end of the stick and on the same side and they are going to be about the width of my palm across So with that one done, I'm now going to do the same to one of these. I'm going to put a flat area there and a flat area there, again about the width of my palm across. I 
Now with the other pole, I'm going to identify the thinner end. I'm going to shave that end flat again to a palm's width. I'm going to do the other end, but instead of doing it on the same side, I'm going to do it on the opposite side. So that is the cutting on the three sticks done. All we've got to do now is lash them together and for that we're going to use this, our paracord. And what I want is two pieces that are about from this shoulder to my fingertips in length. Like so. Now, before we can use this cord for lashing the frame together, there's something important we need to do. One piece of the cord, <clears throat> we need to put an awful lot of pressure on because we're going to use a constrictor knot. And that needs to be beyond stretching. It needs to be a static piece of line because we're going to use a crushing force. On the other piece, what I need is for it to be slightly elastic. And the way we're going to do that is because this is paracord inside the outer mantle there are seven little strands of a much thinner less stretchy cord the outer is quite elastic but the inside doesn't stretch at all the bit I want is this bit these bits I even save those for other projects it can be used for all sorts of things <clears throat> so don't let it go to waste keep it to one side but this is the bit we're about to use for our project so the first job i'm going to use that stripped down cord and what i want to do is attach this the shorter piece to one of the longer pieces and the place that i'm going to join them is against the two flat edges like so and the knot we're going to use on this cord to bind those two together is a jam knot Once you've put your jam knot in place, turn it into a locking jam knot. So you've got plenty of pressure in there that's not going to come undone. So with one side tied off, you're then going to do the same with the other side. Again, using the flat edges, both sticks pushed together and held in place with a locking jam knot. So there we are. What I now want to do is lash these two top bits together so that the two flat edges again are going to sit against each other and for that we're going to use the constrictor knot. There it is, constrictor knot in place. Now you notice I've left these quite long tails on there and all I'm going to do is put a loop in either side and then use a couple of extra sticks to really pull in tight to give us that crushing force. So 
So there it is. And it's nearly finished. Obviously, I'm going to trim these off fairly close and then melt the ends off <coughs> using my lighter. And then I'm going to put another locking jam knot here and another one here. And then we're done. So I'm just going round, finishing off the jam knots, applying a little bit of heat to the nylon. One, it seals off the edges, but two, it also helps seal those knots off so they're not going to go anywhere. And there it is, all lashed together, and that is pretty rigid. The constrictor knot at this end holds those two very firmly in place. And the jam knots that are locked off and that are slightly elastic is holding everything down there at the base nicely together. What we need to look at next is something we can use as our shoulder straps. Now for the shoulder straps, I've seen all sorts of stuff used over the years. Some people use something called mule tape, which is just like a, like a webbing tape. Some people use rope. Uh, and then where it cuts in around here, they just place a small piece of board on their collarbone to help spread the pressure out. I've seen cord used, again, using the little piece of board. But what I tend to use is my survival scarf and a little loop of paracord. And I'll show you how next. So the first thing I do is I take my paracord and again, it's that length from about the center of my chest out to where my fingertips are. <clears throat> and all I'm going to do is put a little fisherman's, couple of fisherman's knots in there to form that loop. And with all of these knots that I've used, if they're not knots that you know, if you go back into my videos, uh, and there's a fairly recent one called Knots for the outdoors and there's just a few simple ones that are also very very useful ones and this is one of them so I've now got a loop of paracord so with my survival scarf what I then do pull the draw cord so that end is all closed off I'll go to the other end And then I'm going to twist it a few times just to make it slightly more rope like and to form a little loop like that. I'm then going to take my piece of paracord and I'm going to go up through the hole in the bottom like so. I'm going to come around the back behind and then where I've got those two bits of cord I'm going to go through those Come out the other side. And that is now locked off and nice and firm. Now with that done, what I now need to do is find the middle of the scarf. So that is the middle. I'm going to form a little loop, then I'm going to attach this to my frame. So now I've got my frame, I've got my scarf and I've got the loop in the middle. I'm going to pass that through like so. Then take that, pass that over the top like that and then pull the two ends through.
like so. So there it is with the shoulder straps all attached. Now to put this on, all we do is we take our side of the strap with the loop on and we place that loop over these two like so. That's then fixed. What I can then do is pull it on, bring my other strap into place like so, pulling it over, getting the weight distributed and then on this side all we then do is take that round behind underneath the two get the weight nice and high on our shoulders and then bring this the draw cord around and just pass it through that little orange loop like so and then all we then do is pull that and adjust it so that the height is good on our shoulders and then this is just tied off in a slippery hitch like so all done it's as simple as that So there you go and these nice wide soft straps actually spread the load out really really well the frame is very strong and it's capable of carrying some large amounts of weight in a future video we'll look at the loadout that you can carry on this and the stuff that we're going to take out <coughs> when we head out into the woods now for our next video, well I won't tell you what it is, it's going to be a bit of a surprise, but it links in with this project and the previous ones that I've done. If you've enjoyed this video then remember, hit that thumbs up button and remember if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Facebook, the links are in the description box down below and there is also a link down there to my Patreon page if you are so inclined to help support there's also a link to my etsy shop please pop over there and have a look there's some of the green craft patches over there some of our mugs uh, and there's very soon going to be a whole load of new stock going up which i'm in the process of making at the moment i think that's everything i've been neil and until next time stay safe <laughs>